Welcome to Barbell Business. I'm Mike Bledsoe, standing here with Marcus Gersey, yep. Doug Larson, and Jessica Webster. We have a full crew to get today. And this is going to be it for a while. It'll be for a while. This is Miss um, Jessica's, Jessica's last, last show. show for a while. Bye, everybody. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't know if she'll ever make it back. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they may not even let me into Canada. We'll see. Do they have internet in Canada? Oh, I don't know yet. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I'm about to introduce it to the country. <laughs> <laughs> All the Canadians hate us right now (laughs) today we're going to be talking about uh continuing education uh how to build up that continuing education as a team within your facility so everyone is moving in the same direction and you're sending a uh, consistent message to all your members no matter who's coaching class or who's greeting them at the door yeah, this is a, uh, a piece Doug and I were talking about a little bit before the show on something that really resonates with like how we have approached our businesses over time. And uh, this is something that we kind of took for granted. We really didn't think it was as necessary and brought as much value as it did until we started to implement it at Active. And uh, we started for us with like the overall class experience for the athletes. Um, it was something we just assumed because of how my partner and I both were on the same page and what we were, what was important to us and how we would deliver material and all that and standards for movement and, and all those different pieces. But we realized as we built the team that it was harder and harder to create that consistency. So we started to come up with systems on how we could do that and make sure that we didn't just create the consistency, but also consistently elevated the quality. So it wasn't just us two getting better, but going in a different direction, but that we all did it together. So everyone's like talents and skills contributed to the overall product so that we were moving it together, moving it forward together. And we had the consistency. So it really kind of created a brand experience rather than it being like, I love Scott's classes, but you know, Marcus's aren't as cool. Right. Or it, it allowed us to f- kind of fill in those <coughs> gaps and everyone has strengths and weaknesses and has those different perspectives perspectives so in in that particular user case it was huge for us as a business yeah i've seen i've walked into facilities where it was obvious that this one coach's style was vastly different than somebody else's and a lot of it had to do with who they had learned from Mm -hmm. and so uh, what we're going to talk today about is how to get everyone on that same page yeah i mean if you sign up to sign up if you apply to get a job say at at a hotel like if you apply to go to like the ritz carlton and to work there you're when you um, get accepted for that position, you're going to get an, an enormous amount of training. Like they're going to be, there's going to be an onboarding process. You might, you might get a hundred hours of training in the first six months that you're there. That's that's a lot of training. And in most CrossFit gyms that are relatively immature in in the game of business, so to speak, there's almost no on, onboarding or Very training rarely. process. They're just like, well, you seem like you're a good coach. You know, come on in. Um, I mean. People are over there. Go coach them. <laughs> Keys are there. <laughs> toilets there. Yeah. Make sure you lock it on your way out. High five. You're in. Yeah. yeah. Right. The the level one is usually you know it's it's one of those things where CrossFit requires the level one, and for some reason we think that that's okay. Like oh, th- all right, we met the bare minimum. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. it only takes the guy or girl down the street to go. We're gonna do more than that. And we're going to have these meetings and we're going to, you know, up our game across the board. And uh, I, I think that a lot of people, especially if we've been running gyms for a long time, have kind of gotten comfortable. Because in the beginning, if you had your level one, you were like, you were way better than anyone else Total in town. Pro. Yeah, you were like, like nobody else was doing it. So, of course, you're the best at yeah. it. You know, that was that was what was setting you apart was that. Now, half the members in your gym have a level one certification. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, like, if you don't, the, the market has been very immature as a whole so far. So, what was setting people apart is not really the case anymore. So, you have to take it to the next level. The average is going up. The average, the average coaching experience that I saw in the gym three years ago is vastly different than the average I see now. The education is going up very quickly, mm-hmm. and it is varying from gym to gym. And within the gym, it's varying from coach to coach, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this and this translates into some really like direct returns for the business owner, too, because this may seem like, okay, cool, we're making a better product, there's consistency, but what does that really mean? It means you're going to have better retention. People are going to be more satisfied because you're creating a better product for the people and what they're paying for. You're creating a better sales experience because you're really figuring out like, how are we approaching this? Let's standardize it and let's teach everyone how to do that. Or if someone just walks in um, off the street and wants to come in and get some information, do we have a standard way that we always approach this? That is our way. That's our tone, our style. And we need to kind of craft that together. You as the gym owner are the leader on kind of like the direction you want it to go, but you can create that overall vibe together. 
and that's really I think what will to our audience resonate is that this will help you sell more. This will help you keep your members longer because they're happier and they're more impressed with the business being professional um, all around. This also helps with um, coach retention too, right? I no, mean, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> this is why it's my last Definitely. day on the show. They don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I call bullshit. <laughs> um, well, to Doug's point, the reason why this whole episode isn't on like onboarding your coaches and it's about education is because like when you think like what do you think of when you hear the word onboarding or like two month long training for me if I was going through an onboarding process that took that long or is that extensive the feeling that I get is like this person who's hiring me doesn't trust that I can do the job that I was hired to do so they're going to tell me exactly how to do it but Mm -hmm. continuing education is really cool because it's like giving me the autonomy to go out and find new information to come back with extra value that maybe I only have that I'm like willing to contribute to um feeling really fulfilled about my position at at your business. Yeah, what you're pointing out is is there's multiple forms of this. So continuing education is not just the example I said with being internal, but there's external, going out and getting additional certifications and going and learning outside of the business to bring new content in so that we can continue to contribute to that that nucleus that is our style, our business, our operations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it could be just as simple as reading a book, you know, picking up uh, Kelly Starrett's book and then, you know, you're going to focus on that for a month and then you're going to bring that information, what stood out to you as a coach and bring that to the other coaches. Yeah, I know some gyms, they, they'll take a book just like the one you mentioned and they'll all read it together. Like they'll, almost, yep. like, almost like a book club. They'll be like, all right, all right, we're all reading chapter one this week and then on Wednesday's staff training session, we're going to talk about the takeaways from chapter one and you know what I got out of it, what I liked, what I didn't like, what I, what I understood really, really well and what I didn't understand at all for inevitably the people that didn't read the chapter. They'll... Uh, you know, you'll be able to teach them what's in the what's in that uh, in that chapter, and then that person will still get something out of that that week, even though they didn't read the chapter. And then all the people that did read the chapter, they'll, they'll get the additional value of being able to teach all the new things that they learned. You can do the same thing with with seminars or whatever. If they if you go to a mobility wad course, then you come back as the one or two people that went to that course, and you teach it to the rest of the staff. That way, you as an owner, you kind of get the you know the biggest bang for the for your buck if you spend a thousand dollars to go to a cert well that thousand dollars doesn't just go to one person it goes to one person for that one time event but then they get the secondary value of being able to teach to the rest of the staff and the staff gets the value of being able to learn from that person as well so try to try to to anytime any one of the people on your team learn something really unique or interesting let them teach it to to the rest of the group yeah, I think that's really important because that's uh, the ongoing education piece of going and getting additional certifications for the things that the individuals are passionate about um, is, I mean, should be looked at as a really cool perk for the coach itself, but it's a perk for the business. It's it's a very valuable expense, right? To say, okay, I'm going to spend a thousand bucks to send this coach away. But if you look at it that way, that was nothing relative to what the whole team is going to benefit from this, right? It's not just, okay, good, good job. You get to go and do a cert and have some fun. Yeah. Like, Great. I'll pay for that. But what I want in exchange is that you're going to come back and you're going to give us a download and you're going to teach us everything that you can teach from that certification and so we can all benefit. Really good point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I like how <clears throat> building in something where they have the, the choice and you're not dictating like this is exactly what you're going to do. Um, I think we've referenced this book many times, the book Drive by Dan Pink. And there's three things that lead to fulfillment. We're talking about being able to retain really great coaches and having uh, the three things are autonomy, purpose, and mastery. And mastery is, is an obvious thing. If you're, if you have coaches in your gym that are not uh, improving in the skill of coaching, they're not, they're not moving that line along and becoming more masterful. Uh, and so uh, there's that piece and the autonomy piece can work into this is by giving them that, that freedom to choose the thing they want to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, yeah, we, yeah. we let them choose like at active, what we used to do is we, we would let them choose their cert and they would basically propose, propose it to us. And if we approved it, then it was good to go. So it's not like you could just throw anything out there and be like, Hey, I'm going to go do this completely unrelated. And I don't really see how that would possibly translate back in kind of cert. Um, but more often than not, it did. So go for it. And so based on their performance, if they were operating as a good employee and, and kind of meeting the quarterly standards, then they could kind of earn these additional certifications. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and even if they don't earn a cert, you you more than likely, if you have a team of three, four, five or more people, you're going to have someone who's kind of a little bit better at gymnastics and someone who's a little bit better at, at movement and mobility and someone who's a, a little bit better at programming. And so all those people should be teaching their specialty to the rest of the staff, yeah. you know, either on a weekly, bi-weekly or, or, or more basis. It could even be daily if you if you have the time for it. 
support. So if I'm the person who writes the programming every week, well, I shouldn't just write the program and then just say, all right, that's the programming and not explain to the rest of the team exactly why I wrote the programming exactly as I did because inevitably the the athletes and, and your, your customers, so to speak, they're going to come to the coach and be like, why are we doing front squats today? Or why are we doing like four sets of two? Or why are we doing um, mobility in between our heavy sets? Or they're going to start asking questions. And if the coach has no idea, they, they can make something up if they if they are somewhat experienced, they might be able to look at the board and have a, an opinion about why they think they should do that and give a good answer. Um, but they might not know exactly why that was specifically written the way that it was with the context of what the workouts were the week before and what the workouts are going to be next week and next month and next quarter. So every single week that the programming comes out, I think a coach should sit down the entire staff and say, okay, here's the entire week's programming. Here's exactly why I did it the way I'm way I did it. Here's the thing that we're working on. Here's what we're doing next week and be able to lay that, that, uh, that foundational knowledge to the rest of the coaches. That way when they get um, questions from the people that attend the gym, they're going to have a real answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it does a lot for like just the overall culture of, of constantly learning and constantly improving because that's what we're asking of our athletes. Mm -hmm. So when it's clear that the staff is constantly learning and bringing new things to the table and, oh, you know, Coach Summer went and did the gymnastics cert this weekend and check out what she brought back. And you're actually showing them like we're going and learning these new things and we're going to implement and it's we're constantly improving and we're going to bring that to you. That's a value to them and it's going to let them know and feel more comfortable with the idea of, oh, it's okay to kind of put my guard back down and not have to be like i already know it all athlete guy mm -hmm. you know so valuable yeah I, th I think it's really important to set up some type of a weekly structure if you already have like a systematic weekly meeting then you should just tack on some aspect of staff training to that meeting you're already all together which is it's oftentimes to get it's difficult to get everyone all together especially if you have like a morning crew mm -hmm. and an evening crew if there's like that crossover <laughs> from like you know noon to <laughs> one or something like that it's a good opportunity to make that the meeting time so some people show up and then they have the meeting right at the very beginning of their day and then they finish out the rest of the day and some people they do the morning session starting at five and then the very end of their day is the meeting so uh, if that's the case you can get all say eight people that that uh, are on your staff all together all at the same time you can have your regular meeting you can go over you know anything that you normally go over uh, in a weekly meeting with all kinds of questions and problems and things that you need to fix and, and whatever whatever but then tack on another 15 or 20 minutes where you teach something super simple like if you you can you can go over technique on an exercise if you're like the movement guy or you know if you've been seeing a lot of uh, you know injuries and, and there's needs to be changes to the programming you can explain why those changes are there uh, or if you're you're going to change the marketings in some in some way and and everyone just needs to be aware that that change is being made that way um you know the 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 deal which is used to be you know uh you know, the referral has changed from first month free to first month half off or something like that. Like you can make sure that you have the opportunity to explain and educate why that change was made. I think a lot of times people just kind of like put out an email or they, or they just tell someone, Hey, we, we, we made that change. And then there's no real education about like <coughs> the big picture of why that thing was changed and why it's a good idea where there's no real understanding the person memorizes the change, but there's no real understanding why that change was made. And you're, you're doing a disservice to yourself and to your staff by, by not taking that opportunity to educate them. They might, they might be able to answer the question better, but that person's not going to grow as, as a team member and be able to, um, you know, in some cases maybe, um, turn into, uh, someone who's more, uh, take on more of a leadership role within the business, or maybe even turns into a business partner who runs the gym down the line. You should be educating your staff because you don't just want to have a bunch of followers. You're trying to grow leaders that way. Um, that way you can, as you grow, they can take on, um, they can take on kind of direct reports, so to speak, themselves, and they can lead those people because they understand why things happen the way they happen. If you don't educate them, they won't understand the why behind why the decisions are made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and aside from just direct reports, they're the ones interacting with your clients. Mm -hmm. And so if they know the deeper why of why something's happening, when a question comes from out of left field and they don't know, if they understand the why, they can adapt to the situation and the explanation. Whereas if they only know, you know, the bullet point, you know, this is exactly what's happening and they don't understand the why and someone asks a question, they're just not going to be able to adapt to, you know, they can only answer one or two questions. But if that third yeah. or fourth get, question gets asked, you're just like, <laughs> because boss said so. And that used to drive me crazy. Is yeah. that, And that's actually where like part of our system like originated was because I would notice that one coach would just completely make some shit up about the reason for something. And I'm like, that's not why. And then, but I'm like, I need to get everyone up to speed. Like, it wasn't just the f surface level. Hey, guys, we're changing this, and here's why. 
we would actually bring it up in a staff meeting and like really address what it is, why we're doing it. Here's what we were doing and why we're changing it to this and the benefits we think are going to happen by doing this so that they understood the whole three dimensional thing so that they could actually freestyle a conversation mm -hmm. um, with like the right content rather than it just being like, oh, well, we changed it because of this. And then they're like, well, why? And they're like, shit, um, I'm going to make something up mm. and don't really know. So mm -hmm. um, that was actually what sparked that was I would because that was my pet peeve that would drive me insane. Yeah. When I would hear like different versions of stories and reasons for things kind of floating around from different staff <laughs> just members. Lies. And I'm just lies. Like, You're all lying. <laughs> no, and um, <laughs> they were just doing their best and it was my fault because I realized we ha we hadn't communicated enough of the story for them to get it and be like, oh, I understand the whole reason why so I can now r like actually answer a variety of questions rather than just the initial one or be able to say in the beginning of a class like, hey, by the way, we've changed the schedule to this or that. And people are like, why? We liked this or that. And you're like, um, because it's, I don't know, cheaper or because it's, we couldn't have someone cover it. And it's like, no, it's not because we couldn't have someone cover <laughs> it. It was, there was a bigger reason for that. And yeah. it's that you, and a better way that you could have explained that, that applies to them rather than the business version of it. I think yeah. There's right? that fine line between like, I think we call it like effective over communication, right? Mm -hmm. Like giving your staff, you staff, giving your team or your crew <laughs> um, enough information for them to be autonomous because autonomy isn't just here's freedom, do whatever you want. People get too confused and they just start making shit up. Mm -hmm. And it's not way over communicating everything because that makes them completely overwhelmed. And that mm -hmm. is not autonomy. So I love what you were saying about having that system in a meeting and creating that mechanism for people to like teach each other things because then there's an agreement between peers and not just an agreement between like staff member and employer mm -hmm. or staff member and his um, clients. It's like my agreement is with all of you. Now it's my job to come fully. And I was even thinking about like types of learning. This might not be true what I'm about to say, but I think that there's another type of learning. <laughs> I'm so great, glad you're sure of great yourself. Great content. Um, <laughs> just going to throw that out there. Yeah, I think there's another type of learning that they've identified as like um, read, write, and read, speak. And so um, people, there's certain types of people who don't actually consume information or don't actually learn it unless they teach somebody else. And so I think that it kind of goes in line with like the kinesthetic learner who has to actually do it first before they fully understand it. Mm -hmm. So maybe teaching it to your peers would be a good way of like actually consuming it before you go off to say it to the masses that are paying you money. Mm -hmm. I've always seen teaching as the final stage of learning. Mm -hmm. So there's stages of learning and uh, you haven't you haven't learned it to its fullest until you've taught it because that's when you can in embody it. So mm -hmm. there's a difference between knowing and embodying uh, a piece of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And until you teach it, I think the embodiment of that knowledge is very difficult. Um, it was like the model of, of learning, practicing, and doing. Like you learn it from somebody else, mm -hmm. they tell you it, and then you kind of like think about it, and you're like, oh, I think I get it. And then maybe you practice in some form or another, and then you actually have to do the thing. So uh, in, in some type of staff meeting, if I come in and I say, hey, like here's how I teach, you know, here's how I explain the programming of the day to the class and I, I give an example here's here's me writing on the board here's me explaining it to the class and then I let everyone kind of absorb that and then I can let everyone come up one by one and, and they can practice and we can give that person feedback so mm -hmm. they learn it and then they practice it immediately right afterward yeah mm -hmm. and yeah. when it comes to communication if you're talking to if one of your your team someone on on your staff starts saying something that isn't quite true or you know, there appears to be confusion about what you intended to happen and you feel like you communicated it well. I know that there was a time in my past where if somebody did or said something that wasn't in line with what I understood was communicated, I would be like, oh, they just weren't listening. I would put it on them. And then over the last few years, I've moved that that uh, responsibility over to myself. As, as soon as somebody, if someone says or does something that's out of a out of what I think is the alignment of where we're going, I then go, wow, I could have, I obviously didn't communicate that as well as I could have. And it might have been they weren't listening. <laughs> but because of the perspective of if somebody isn't receiving the message like I would like for them to receive it, then there's nothing I can do to help them out. But it, all, I am totally responsible with the, how well I can communicate. And when I started taking that perspective, my ability to communicate went started going up really quickly because I saw every opportunity where there was miscommunication. When I took the full responsibility for that, I got really good at explaining things in a very in a way that it could be absorbed. And now that skill like, you know, it bleeds over into marketing, sales, anything. And we're all you know, we're always selling, even if it's just hanging out with your friends and like, we should go eat eat at this restaurant. 
you know, you're selling an idea. Uh, and it's all key to having more persuasion. Mm-hmm. And that's what you want. You want to persuade more people. Yeah, it's like the old, the old NLP <laughs> saying, the, the meaning of a communication is, is the response that you get. And so if I, if I say, okay, um, we're going to do four sets of, of 10 on front squats today, and, and we're going to do that because, you know, four sets of 10 is a good amount of volume to have some gains, some muscle mass in their legs. And then I say, okay, like, tell me what you heard. And they're like, uh, we're doing four sets of 10 um, because uh, we're working on getting stronger. And you're like, well, that was like, that's not exactly what I said. Like, they already believed that that could have been the case. And so, even though that's kind of also the case, that's not what you tr- were trying to communicate. They had the assumption that, that by looking at what you're looking at, they already, they already know what the answer is. And so, they already had that thing built up in their head. So, then, after asking them, you know, what did you hear? And what they heard was not what you said. Then it's the responsibility is on you to totally. go back and re-clarify. And then again, ask them, okay, what did you hear? And so what they say back to you is actually what you meant. Right. right. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, let's take a break real quick. When we come back, we're going to dig into some things you can implement right away to get your team on the same page and getting better education. Yeah? Yeah. yeah sure. Is that a good sentence? <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that even, what? Quick cut. <laughs> Hey everybody, Marcus from Barbell Business here. Now you hear us talking about Barbell Logic all the time, so instead of me talking about it some more, we're gonna have one of our clients do it for us. Hi, I'm Drew Gerton from CrossFit Pendulum in Pasadena, California. And I am so happy to be using Barbell Logic. It has made a world of difference for me and my business. The biggest benefit has been our growth. We've been able to add more people and I've been able to actually phase out of coaching so that uh, I can run the business more and grow it. If you want to grow your business and add more members and know exactly where they're at in the pipeline, then do it because it will help you. It's helped me, I know that it's helped others and it's also produced the numbers and the results that we were looking for. And we're back. (laughs) (laughs) Show show us what you do for... uh, Soft tissue work before every show. Pre-show prep with Doug Larson. New York. Ah, Unique. Unique. New York. New York. (laughs) Cow now, brown cow. (laughs) (laughs) Rubber baby. This is pretty much (laughs) what we do. How you doing? (laughs) Rubber baby buggy bumpers. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty fucking good. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't pull it off Marcus share with us what are tell us in your best Arnold we, voice what what, <laughs> <laughs> what should we be doing uh, <laughs> as, as uh, gym owners for continuing education what do we where are we where are our resources um, well where are the resources <laughs> right here um, no, no I mean oh, certainly is we're, one of them. we're definitely the resource for gym owners nothing else don't do anything else just this show um, <laughs> but I mean for the coaches you know the gyms <laughs> <laughs> um, you know it's um, in regards to like how to where to even kind of start with this um, I learned it really comes down to first making this a part of what your culture even is and I think a lot of the gym owners are already kind of living and breathing and walking the walk of like we're learning and we're educating ourselves and that's kind of what got you to where you are but really actually communicating that vision and getting everyone on board to be like this is a part of who we are not just like maybe you a little bit more than you but like we as a team need to be constantly constantly learning and evolving and improving what it is that we bring to the table as you know what we learn as individuals so we can bring more to the table collectively so i think it, everything starts with just kind of what if you're a brand new gym you can make this part of what your you know your core values are is you know we're constantly learning and evolving or if this is something you realize a few years into business you're like i need to do this now sit down with your team during the next staff meeting and say like, guys, this is something that is, has been really important to me and I want to carry this over and get all the knowledge that you guys have and we can all pull this together and create an even better work, work environment, better product for our clients and just a better business in general so we can all just serve our clients better. Yeah, it certainly should be a part of your recruiting and or interviewing process too. If you're looking to hire a coach, like yep. if you ask them, you know, what have you done lately to learn more about fitness and conditioning and, and fitness and strength and conditioning rather, <laughs> uh, they they probably will give you like one or two answers. They're all they're kind of like um uh like they're they're not really going to be sure. Or they're gonna they're gonna roll their eyes and be like, 
okay, like I've done, I've done this, this is my favorite podcast, and I got these these ten certs, and I just read these four books, and and I I, I took this guy out to lunch, and I picked his brain on on this topic, and and I, I did a truncation that way I could learn, and like they'll go on and on and on about like all the things they've done lately to try to learn more about you know being a, a, a high quality athlete and a really good coach. So you definitely need to kind of at a at a higher level make sure that you just recruit and hire the right people that they are just going to be this type of person where they're always trying to learn. And then on the other side of that, to your point, making it a part of the culture, like if you're the leader and you're the owner, you certainly have to be that person yourself. If you're not that type of person, there's no amount of convincing or or systemizing or, or anything else that you're <laughs> going to be able to do to make your staff be super motivated to do more than you're going to be doing. So yep. you have to set the standard and you have to be the role model yourself or just there's no there's no um, amount of of effort that you're going to be able to put in yeah. to make that the, the thing that everyone else does but you're the exception yeah i think you have to do it together i think that's the key is it's not just saying like from a dictatorship like hey this is what i want you guys to do because you guys need to do a better job and make it something hey we're going to learn together this is i'm no better than you are and you're no better than i am we're all going to learn and improve because you are great at things that i'm not so great at and i have things that i can teach you and we're all just going to throw it into the pot and I think, you know, you start by communicating that as the vision in general. As you hire on new people, you let them know this is a big part of our culture. You obviously can, in the interview process, extract if that's even who they are, like, at the core. If they are, you can kind of let them know this is going to be how we do things, you know. And when you're actually, like, implementing this, start small. You don't have to start with this, like, huge rollout of, like, all these, th we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Do something that you know you can all do together and make it something that's going to be cool and that people are going to actually enjoy doing. So if you know that a few people on your team, like they necessarily maybe they don't learn by reading, they like to go and do in-person events, like pick something that you guys can all collaborate on and start with something simple and so that you can start getting some traction. And then you can start getting ideas from one another on other, other things that you can do to expand on it. But don't set these crazy big expectations like we're going to learn this and we're going to do a million things in the next quarter. Start small and just inch your way up and see how people respond because everyone wants to improve. Everyone wants to get better in one way or the other. And it's really fun when you get to do that and celebrate your like growth together. So do it as a team. It'll, it'll bond everyone together. It'll let everyone leverage in what they feel like they're very talented at. And so they can start to contribute like, hey, this is the, the movement guy or this is the like experienced guy. And this is the guy who's really good at the sales and marketing aspect. And like everyone help everyone. I have a question. Go. If you Ready. had to pick one book, okay, you guys have all had like coaches and admins. We're talking about admins too, right? We're talking about Everyone. everybody that's on your team. What would be like one book or one resource that you would give <coughs> gift to your team for them to read? On the business um, side of things? Whatever you think is important. Yeah. Like sure. your first thing uh, on continuing. I think I think just cross the board, the easiest book that you can give to, to almost anyone that gets a value out, out of it is How to Win Friends and Influence People. Mm -hmm. Like that is like just the book that if you yes. haven't read it you need to go read it it applies to to anyone <laughs> every that you relationship know. yeah anytime you're dealing with another human being in, in any capacity that book has just just a piece of advice after piece of advice that is going to um, help you in every single interaction you're ever going to have the rest of your entire life so mm -hmm. uh, that's probably the easiest book to start with on my end that's a good one yeah and it's amazing how that book to some people, it's like, oh, yeah, totally. This is how I am. And you get a few nuggets out of it. And other people are like, what? I have to yeah. ask people questions? <laughs> yeah, so I, have to, I have to be genuinely interested in other people. Like, <laughs> you know, and it's a, it's such a good starting point because it gets everyone kind of in the mindset of like, this is all relationships. Everything is relationships. And in a service business, like that's the bottom line mm -hmm. is like how you're interacting with people, how you're showing up and how you're communicating. Um, so whether you're in a sales role or you are the, you know, the head coach and you're communicating with the staff. Mm -hmm. That's a great place to start. Yeah. Uh, another very good one is it's called The Art of Explanation. She said one. I, I so said one. another. I said another one. Nope. Nope. These two actually don't read books. So Doug's yeah. like, I have to carry the team. What's here. a book? Yeah. <laughs> no. No, that's not true. Green Eggs and Ham. I, I read it at least four times. Dr. Seuss has yeah. some things to say. I, I do. I read Dr. No Seuss books like seven a day. Oh. <laughs> like, like so many. I got a one and a half year old. <laughs> hop on pop. He goes pop pop. Oh. Yeah, hop on pop. Come on, man. <laughs> talking about Mike. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, read, I've read so many hop on pops. You don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, The Art of Explanation is, is, is a very good book. So if you're any type of a, a mentor, a teacher, a coach, or, or, or anything, like the, the skill of being able to explain something to somebody where they understand what you're saying and you, and you understand where they're coming from, like you understand their situation, their, their level of education, you have enough empathy for them to be able to connect what you're saying to them because you understand their situation and you know that that they need to feel that you understand their situation or they can't accept almost anything that, that you are saying if they don't feel understood then there's going to be resistance there anytime you're in the gym and you say you know why don't you go why don't you go do do front squats instead of back squats like if they're like oh i don't know like and they start to like explain their whole life story to you you're like i don't fucking care just go do the front squats like that's because they don't feel understood you have to sit there and listen to them and then after after they feel understood and then you provide a solid rationale for why you're making that specific change for them where they don't feel like they're like getting the dunce cap on their head and they're like the the kid that's getting, being put in the corner because they're they're unique in a bad way and okay. they're being like cast to the side while the rest of the class does back squats like you have to be able to 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 in that interaction to be able to understand where they're coming from that way they say oh okay like this guy is actually helping me um, do something that's really really good for me and then they'll go do it without any resistance and if you, if you aren't very good at at making someone feel understood and you don't have empathy for their situation then you're going to get resistance over and over and over again so mm-hmm. um, start with why and the art of explanation to have very similar points um, on that category but uh, if you want to learn how to um, be able to set context uh, very effectively, then I think um, The Art of Explanation is a very good book for that. Cool. Start with why would have been mine. Yeah? Yeah, that's a great one. Because if you get caught up in the task of helping somebody improve their back squat, like there is a fine minority of people that are there to improve their back squat. Most people are there for a much more purposeful why. And even you as a coach are there for a more purposeful why. And so you can get caught up in like, just listen to me because this is my job and da da da. But after reading that book, like I realized that a lot of the things that I do professionally and personally have, like they all point to this one thing Mm -hmm. and that helps me um, show up in a situation with a lot more empathy and if you don't know what empathy is, um, there's a... <laughs> Google it. <laughs> good, good it's called luck. the internet. <laughs> um, no, but I heard this really... You guys have probably seen it too, but it's like this cute bear animated like video. It's like three minutes long. The Brene Charmin Brown. commercial? I was going to say, I, I Charmin just, commercial. I, that's exactly what I saw. These bears like are toilet <laughs> paper. <laughs> oh my God. Oh no, it ripped again. <laughs> um, no, it's with Brene <laughs> Brown. I know those bears are always pooping and like showing each other <laughs> the toilet paper. They have a bear shits in the woods. <laughs> um, Brene Brown's like explanation on empathy is really was really amazing to me. Like I thought I knew what it was until I saw this three minute thing. I was like, oh, that made a lot, a lot more sense. Where can people find that? Internet. Internet. What is that? It's Do I type it in the Google? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Google it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I would have been my porn machine. The beatbox. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't go, don't don't Google bear in your porn machine. <laughs> your your, bear. your bear. search has been conditioned bear too porn. much. <laughs> <laughs> Google um, knows me so well. <laughs> I, I would have started with the how to win friends and influence people because I think that the we're in the communication business, like regardless of your role. Um, I mean, I think if I was trying to help kind of get my team on board for like the growth of the business, um, even though they aren't the business owner, like maybe the e-myth would be a good place for them to even understand kind of like the fundamentals of why I may be making certain decisions. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like that's always such a, such an eye opener for people who are first starting to really understand how to actually build a business. So you can kind of get them on board with some of your objectives, um, might be a good place to start too. Yeah, that's something that as you learn about any topic, as you learn more and more about training, you forget that people don't know what they don't know. And as you learn more and more (coughs) about business, you forget that people don't know what they don't know. Like if you're, you just mentioned the the E-Myth, that book's all about why systems are important in a business. And Mm -hmm. you might be trying to build systems and nobody's building them because nobody understands the importance of them in the first place. They just see it as a pain in the ass. It's like more to do. You're just trying to micromanage me. Yeah, and it's no man. This is going to make all of our lives easier, and they don't get that if they don't get the why. And that's a right. great book to do that. Yeah, like in the art of explanation, they they point out that beginners need a lot more why, and then once they understand the why, then they need a lot more how. Mm-hmm. And so, if you have someone who's an expert, you just you just need to teach them how to do it because they already understand the context. They understand why it's important, so there's no resistance. They just need to know what to do. Mm-hmm. But if you don't know anything about a topic, and they, and I just say, hey, you know, welcome to the CrossFit class. Uh, we're doing back squats today. Okay, when you uh, when you do back squats, you got the bar on your back, and you're gonna go up and down, and blah 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 blah. And then <laughs> I've been doing it all wrong. <laughs> That's how you do it, up and down, <laughs> uh, or down and up, I suppose. Like, 
my coaching cues are way off. <laughs> <laughs> Up and down, holy. <laughs> I went the wrong direction. I went down, down. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but so. yeah, it, I, I, I have seen coaches do this many times. They have all these new people, and then they just start teaching the technique with no context for why we do back squats in the first place and why technique even matters in the first place. They just start teaching the technique because to them it's so obvious. Like they know why they know why they're doing back squats and they know all the benefits. Why and benefits are often tied together. Like if you're trying to educate someone on why they're doing something, basically you're trying to explain the benefits. If I was explaining the benefits of back squats, it's good for your mobility. It's good for make, to make you stronger. It's good to give you to help you build muscle mass is good for your athleticism, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of people, they skip over the why and they just go d- right directly to the how mm-hmm. because they're an expert and, and the, the why is almost assumed. So uh, if there's a piece of advice to take away from this podcast today is that don't assume people know why you're doing what you're doing. They'll have, they might have their own reason, but they won't know why you are choosing to mm-hmm. do it. So you always have to re-explain why, why, why all the time. Start with why. Yeah. Um, we're going to skip Mike because he's not contributing to this yeah. conversation at all. Yeah. Ashley has been gone for, what, five days now? He's and you haven't eaten or two. slept <laughs> two. or two days? It you feels know? like five. Yeah. It feels like forever. It's been, it's been two days. <laughs> maybe, maybe three? I'm what? losing track. It's, it, when you don't sleep, you, it's kind of hard to figure out what day it is. <laughs> what book do you recommend? Uh, the Untethered Soul. You're going like swinging for the fences. People are going to be like, I don't even know why I'm here. Like, what am I doing with my life? Yeah, that might, that might happen. <laughs> <laughs> Bletso employer move. <laughs> hey, welcome no, to I the mean, team. Read this. We're talking about like if you, if you, all the books that have been mentioned, well, especially the books that you start with why and art explanation and all these things are about your relationship to other people. And this book specifically deals with your relationship with yourself. Mm-hmm. And so I find that once you start working on the relationship with yourself, the understanding of human nature as a whole, because what is specific to you is very universal. Uh, Once you kind of tune into your own personal relationship with you, the relationship with those around you becomes uh, much, much easier. So we could play around at the surface or we go straight for the root. And so it's not sold as a business book or a sales book or an anything book other than just like even the cover of the book is Life fucking book. terrible. Oh, it has um, a unicorn on it. No, or it's a horse. Right? Oh. It's a horse running on the beach. <laughs> but nothing about the cover of the book <laughs> makes me want to read it. <laughs> but it still found its way in my hands. And after reading it, I was like, this is like a really good explanation around a lot of how just how the mind works. Mm-hmm. And so um, after reading that, I think, a lot of people I've suggested to read it, and after they've read it, they've had a lot of breakthroughs in a lot of aspects of their life. Uh, we probably know some people who are coaching who probably don't belong coaching, not because they're not good at it, but because it's not really what they're supposed to be doing. It's They're doing it for some other reason other than you know what they're really here to do. And sometimes when people read that book, they do stop. You know, They come to an abrupt stop in their life and go, oh, I've been on autopilot. I need to go another direction. Mm-hmm. And if that if somebody is in your facility, if somebody's in your business on autopilot, if you can get them out of that and the ch- what ends up happening is they leave, that's the best thing that could happen to everybody in the situation because they were dra- like that was com- that was causing friction and drag even if you can't recognize it. Mm-hmm. So, I and if somebody is supposed to be there, it's going to be like rocket fuel into their purpose. Good, very good. Um so let's talk about other external ways to kind of like help build that ongoing education. So we got books, we got some great um, examples. Um, we could be doing like certifications, staff, right? We talked about that a little bit in uh, the first part of the show. Yeah. Um, and um, like I was also saying in the beginning, we would provide this for our staff uh, as much as we could. And we'd say, okay, great. Like every quarter, we try to like rotate between staff and say, you can now, you know, pick a certification. What do you want to go for? Um, and we had a variety of different ways. So like, even when we couldn't necessarily like afford it, when we first started doing it, we would do like a, a payback kind of a thing. So we'd say you can pay for it. And once you've coached X amount of hours after doing your certification, we would reimburse you like every paycheck or you can get creative with the ways that you can cover it for people and provide this as a perk. Mm -hmm. But I thought that one was a really fun one because then we started having people going and doing like, even like public speaking and, and things that may feel unrelated, but would come back and completely right. change their game as a coach mm-hmm. because they just, it was personal development mm-hmm. in something that translates into their day to day. Right. Yeah. I like bringing people in too. Like if you're going to have, if you have the option to say, send someone to a nutrition certification or seminar, as opposed to letting 
or inviting rather someone who teaches a nutrition cert or seminar into your gym to do the cert at your gym. Maybe you make a deal with them where they can they can use your facility at no cost, but your entire staff can come along and then you split the money. So anytime you can turn education into a profit center as opposed to something that you just pay a bunch of money for, I think you should because then you can do a lot more of it like you can do it you can do it once a week or once a month or once a quarter way easier when you're not paying a thousand bucks a pop when you're you know hopefully in that case you know, maybe you make a couple thousand dollars by having the, the seminar at your gym so if you can set up a system like that then um, you yourself and your entire staff can do as much education as you want mm-hmm. uh, that, that's actually one of the reasons that i really like us we, we run a mastermind every mastermind i go to i always walk away from it learning a ton and so it's education that is a part of what we do, and I learn a bunch in the process as opposed to me having to go to a mastermind, which we also do. But every time I go to someone else's mastermind, it costs me a bunch of money. I learn a bunch of stuff as opposed to makes me money, and then I learn a bunch of stuff. I always would rather make money while learning rather than spend money while learning. Sure. I think the important thing with uh, with like sending people out for certifications and any of this external stuff is that make sure that you always have a download. So if you send them away mm-hmm. to the certification, it wasn't just like, oh, how was it? Oh, it was great. It was awesome. Good talk. And that's it. Make sure you actually get some sort of a debrief and do that in the context of the whole team. So it's like do it at the quarter or at the, the weekly or the monthly meeting or um, have them submit some sort of a report on what it is that they learned so they actually are kind of regurgitating the information and, and hopefully helps them learn a little bit better. And maybe you make that like an internal thing that you send to your staff. Um, but make sure that there's always something that you are able to kind of like download off of it rather than just sending people out for these things, um, which is obviously the easy thing. We kind of can forget about that kind of piece. But um, I would most certainly build that in if you're going to be taking care of certifications or bringing in subject matter specialists to um, your facility. Yeah. Yeah. Another example, if you're coaching an athlete, like someone's going to be doing cleans. Well, you as the coach, you're going to stand next to that person doing cleans, and they're going to do it. You're going to watch them, and they're going to give them feedback. Mm-hmm. Well, how often do you do that with your own coaches? Does, does someone, like their clean is coaching a class, and you are the coach. They're coaching a class. You're observing them, and then after class, you say, okay, you did this you did this well. You did this not so well. Like you teach, you teach someone how to coach class the exact, the exact same way you teach someone how to how to do a clean. Mm-hmm. Like they do it right in front of you and then you give them feedback. A lot of coaches or gym owners, they don't do that. They they tell someone to go coach a class and then they're just out there practicing with no consistent daily <clears throat> feedback. So uh, one of the things we were talking about before the show was was you guys had had made some type of like a like a form where you were like scoring people on coaching classes. So yeah. I think that's a, a really good way to go about it. If someone can coach a class and you can sit there and you can you can score them, maybe they know you're scoring them or maybe they don't know. Maybe you just like keep it to yourself so, so that they're just coaching a class the way they normally would without being without changing it because they're being observed but you know if you're scoring them on did they start the class on time um did they use were they using consistently using people's names in the class uh, did they did they stop the strength work on time and go on to the metcon did they explain the movements correctly did they did they give each individual person some amount of attention on 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 their technique or or when they weren't doing something correctly did they make it a, a modification when they were supposed to if you can score them and then go back and say okay here's what you did well here's what you didn't su- do so well etc cetera, etc cetera, then now they they have some feedback and they can go back in and teach another class and hopefully improve uh, and or you could have each each and every person on your team that coaches classes score each and every other person on your team that coaches classes. So if we're the four people that are the coaches at a gym, then you guys would all score me on one class and I would score each one of you on one class. Then we would all go into the office or whatever and I would stand up in front and, and you guys would basically talk about, here's what I saw when you coached the class. You you, know, you did this well, you didn't do this well. And I, I get feedback from everybody. That way it's not just the gym owner saying, okay, like you, know, you, you did good or you did bad. And then it's like the owner is is coming down on me for not doing well it's it's like this very objective feedback and you get the variety from the other people in the room so um, it's not necessarily like like reading a book it's like actual feedback on what you've really done in the real world i would yeah. recommend that you kick that off with what you did well yeah followed by you know what might need some improvement the shit sandwich yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> did great it this well. sucked but this was okay no, I, yeah. th- I mean, that piece, uh, that was one of the biggest like transformers in our ability to create like a, a really like active branded like experience when people would go into our classes was we were trying to figure out how can we create or recreate what makes the like 
the most special classes so good and then the ones that are like maybe not as good or like because everyone had different strengths and weaknesses and we said how can we make it consistent and consistently better so that that process was actually born out of my partner had it, he was highly analytical he was more the the movement specialist he was kind of the the tech technical specialist and for me it was all about the relationships and the communication and the way people felt in class and so we basically said okay well let's do this Every quarter, we're going to alternate. At first, we would do them together. So we would each shadow each coach twice for a full class, and we created a full-on like survey. And he had his version that answered the questions that he wanted to on technical movement, and I had mine based on what I felt created a great experience. So he would do his, I would do mine, and then we would powwow, and we would take that information back then to the staff meeting and say, okay, here's what we saw. You guys are rocking it with this stuff. Um, I think we can all work on time management a little bit, so here's what we're going to do. We basically pick one thing every every time we had a staff meeting that we would focus on based on what we saw in real time through these, um, we would call them audits on our part, but like class shadowing. Um, and so I put one up on the board here to kind of like demo but you, you covered a lot of the stuff but like we would start with like basically kind of hanging back you're not assisting in any way possible and we'd say okay well what was the, the class start time and then we'd say okay intro speech did you cover what we're doing today why we're doing that and how it applies to them um the time related to that warm-up was it relevant to what we're doing or were you just doing shit to entertain people um was there a social aspect to the warm-up piece um, then we said, okay, part one, did you demo? Did you do, then do movement prep together in t actually doing it together? Or were you just dictating? Um, how was the energy in part one? And we would do that for each section. And the part that to me was the most important was, are you, and I would basically in the beginning of class, I would list out literally every single person in that class's name up here on the left. And I would say, okay, did you use their name at least once in the class? When I heard them use the name, I would check the box. And then did you give them a cue? Did you then observe it? And then did you provide feedback? Because sometimes people will just sit there and just be able to cue, 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 but they're not actually sticking around to be like, okay, did that get any better? And then provide feedback afterwards. So I wanted to make sure that that really was consistently happening every time. So I would basically just check as I went through class. And this ended up becoming kind of like the standard for like crafting our experience. There was a little bit more going on, but this is kind of the rough idea. And I encourage you to take what you feel, find is most important in creating like basically your best possible class experience and start to really kind of frame that out. Like it's being on time. It's, it's how you're presenting at the board. It's not just like, hey guys, we're doing Fran today. It's going to suck. All right, let's head out on a run. It's like, let's talk about what we're doing today and why is it important? And maybe and another thing we would say is like some common things that we're going to be looking for today. Like here's what good looks like. Here's some things that, that would be not so good. And like really get let people understand like the whole point of what we're doing as coaches and what we're hoping for them is going to happen and why this how this plays into the bigger picture. So if they go into class really understanding and having expectations. And if it's like, if it's a big class and we've got a lot of stuff to cover, saying things like, hey guys, we got a lot of people here today. We're going to be doing this and this and we're going to need to transition quickly so guys help me make sure we get this done right and like making sure that all of those little communications were happening and you just systemize it and then we start shadowing each other and then eventually it was going from both my partner and I um, doing them together with people to splitting and alternating quarters and then we eventually ended up handing this off to our head coach and he was able to take our system that we created that was our standard and now continue to carry it on as we kind of stepped out of that role. So I, have, I haven't done that in a long time, but he still runs off of the same general model, right? So he created his own version because we created him through our system. And then he created is now the head coach. He needs to own it. So he has his version of it mm -hmm. and the cycle kind of repeats itself, but it allows us to actually like measure the quality and in real time, see how can we continue to educate? So what we see on the output of this, so if it's time management, we're going to say, great for the next, you know, book we're going to recommend or the next thing we're going to talk about in our meeting or like this would be a really cool thing we can bring up and teach our people. So let's do our own homework and do a little exercise in the next one. And you'll figure out ways that work for you. But this was a huge transformation in us really kind of elevating the overall quality. And then you do the same thing in the sales process. You have someone go through it. You figure out what the best possible patterns are and then you standardize it and then you start to watch each other. And we would just sit there and just follow along and be like, oh, hey, I'm the new guy and it's my first day and like kind of, you know, BS your way <laughs> through it so that the, the customer doesn't feel like we're like watching the tactics go down and just follow along and it it allows you to form things really naturally on how you do them and you as the owner usually are going to be at first the best one to do this so at least start somewhere but then like Doug was saying then it goes peer to peer so it starts off as like owner to peer 
or excuse me, owner to team member, and then it eventually becomes team member to team member where you can then start rotating each other through because you've all started to adopt this kind of like standard of, hey, we're all helping each other and man, you rock this and then we can talk about it at the next staff meeting. It's a beautiful thing as it starts to take form because you can kind of start to back out a little bit and see that the culture is now like thriving within itself on quality and growth and development. It was huge. Nice. You don't still happen to have that, do you? <clears throat> no, that's top secret. Okay. I was thinking, I think I might make a template because that's we'll, awesome. We'll make a template. Yeah. yeah we'll make right. one. I'm going to think of a good URL for this through the <laughs> course of the show. <laughs> you got about Go 10 ahead, seconds. I was about to wrap it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Let's do um, barbellbusiness.com slash score dash card. Score dash card? Mm -hmm. As in hyphen? Mm-hmm. Yes. That's too complicated. Do we already have scorecard, scorecard taken or something? I feel something? like we do. Let's do barbellbusiness.com slash... Oh, and you took my little thing off. Audit? Class shadow. Class shadow. One word. Class shadow. Class shadow. Class shadow. Very good. Free template. Download it. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. It's really good. <laughs> it's great. It's going to be, it's it's gonna so be phenomenal. So you better get to work. I've seen it. It's awesome. Uh, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll put something together for you guys to download, <laughs> and you guys can take it and make it your own and implement it. Um, and like I said in the beginning, um, make sure that you start kind of small with this stuff. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Um, pick something that's going to be a value. This is a great place to start and slowly start to roll it out and add to it as it starts to take form with your team jumping on board and getting engaged. Excellent. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> We're so happy you came. <laughs> Thanks, guys.